Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to talk about testing your ketones. And we will start this test right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way. Every Every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about testing your ketones because a lot of people keep messaging us asking us like, hey, should I test my ketones or like what's the best method to testing my ketones? People also ask what time of day should I test my ketones and how often throughout the week should I test my ketones? Yeah. And unfortunately, there's no simple answer to these questions. That stinks. I want a simple answer to everything. (laughs) Well, there really isn't one because there's a lot of factors that play into this. So there's different methods to testing your ketones. You can test with your blood, you can test with urine, you can test with um, even your breath and then like there's a lot of factors that go into like what level of ketosis you are like when the last time you ate is like what kind of stress level are you in like how often are you sleeping yeah because the fact of the matter is somebody that is just onboarding onto a keto lifestyle is going to be looking and measuring things very differently than somebody that's been in ketosis for two and a half years like yourself right so i think before we even get into the testing phase let's talk about like the different types of ketones because that directly correlates to like like which way you want to test. So there's three kinds of ketones that we can measure. You can measure acetoacetate, which is basically going to be measured in your urine. And that's where we usually start. The pee strips. The pee strips. They're not really necessary, but they are definitely something that a lot of people start with. Yeah. Now the benefit to the pee strips is number one, they're cheap. Mm-hmm. And they will give you a good result at the beginning stages of doing keto because you're quickly going to start making ketones and you can really just pee on a strip basically and say like, hey, I'm producing ketones. Yeah, they let you know that something has happened. Right. The problem with that is there's a lot of things that affect that urine strip. Like what time of the day are you testing? Are you like dehydrated? Because if you're dehydrated, you're going to get a much different level than if you're fully hydrated. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of times when you test in the morning with that, you get a really high purple level. But then you test after you've gone to the bathroom a couple of times and now all of a sudden the purple is gone and people start freaking out going like, hey, I'm not in ketosis anymore. Yeah. The biggest problem with the pee strips though is they're measuring acetoacetate. Which is just the excess ketones. So it's like going out in waste. Yeah, it's the ketones that your body's got and it's like, I don't know what to do with these extra ketones so it starts dumping them in the urine. But the problem is what happens is, you know, once you get fat adapted, you don't have all those excess ketones being dumped into the urine. So you're going to go pee on that strip and think like, oh my gosh, I'm not in ketosis anymore. But you really are. It's just now your body is utilizing those ketones. Yeah, it's like... It's, it's a good test for people just onboarding onto a keto diet to just see that something is happening and get excited and be motivated that something is happening and you're heading in the right direction. But I would say probably after a month, yep. don't use them anymore because yeah. they're just going to get lighter and lighter and you're going to get frustrated. It's kind of like when you test for you know pregnancy, you pee on that strip. You don't like continue peeing on strips like still pregnant, still right. pregnant. <laughs> Like, there'll, there'll be other ways to see that you're, like, deep into the pregnancy, right? Like, big belly. Yeah. yeah. You're, it's happening still. Yeah. I mean, buy one bottle, and when the bottle's gone, don't use them anymore. It's just going to be a waste of your money. And I remember when Rachel first got started, she had the same kind of thing. She, you know, went and bought a set. She showed deep purple. And then after about a week or so, it started getting lighter, and then it got lighter. And by, like, week two or three... It hardly showed anything, and she was like, what's going on? I'm not in ketosis. Right, and it was totally frustrating, and like it, it was really ma- hurting my feelings and my progress because I was doing everything right, but showing like a, a very faint you know, rose color on the pea strip. So don't make your mountain higher. <laughs> right. 
So the next kind of ketones I want to talk about is beta hydroxybutyrate, okay, which are BHBs. Now those are going to be measured in your blood. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a lot about blood testing. And with that, what happens is, is your liver produces the ketones, your cells start latching on, they send them to your brain, and then all of the extra ketones that your body isn't currently using get released in your bloodstream so that you can basically like stored energy. They're floating around in your blood for your body to be able to grab them. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem with this is, is first of all, the further along you get in your keto lifestyle, if somebody like me, if you've like really good, really been fat adapted for a couple of years, your body starts to get really good at utilizing those ketones. And sometimes you don't have a lot of excess ketones in your blood because your body knows like I need to produce this many to operate on my day. And everybody knows like the magic number when you're testing your blood, people want to see like at least a 0.5. Well, you're thinking that the longer you're on this keto, you know, journey, you should be getting a two, getting a three, getting a four. And and that may not be the case. You may, you know, go up to, you've had days where you're like a 1.2 or something, but then you'll be doing fine later in the week and, and test as a 0. 0.5. Right. You don't want to get frustrated by that or hurt. It's, it's working. You're in ketosis. You're good. Right. Now, the whole thing with that is, is the higher the number does not mean you're burning any more fat. It doesn't mean any extra weight loss. It just means you have extra ketones floating around in your blood. The other thing with blood ketone measuring is it can be manipulated pretty easily. And people don't always understand this. You can manipulate it by taking some exogenous ketones. Yeah, because you're hearing the BHBs. When we're talking about this, you can purchase BHBs, right? right? And add that to your diet and and then score much higher. Absolutely. And that's what happens is, is, you know, you go drink some exogenous ketones and then like check yourself like a half hour later. And for at least a half hour to an hour, maybe if you're lucky, you're going to have like really high numbers. Then your body's going to go through those extra exogenous ketones really quickly because it's going to use them before it uses the other ones. And then you're going to be back down to your normal level. The other thing that affects your blood ketone levels is like your stress level, uh, what you ate. I mean, I could easily manipulate those numbers by drinking a bunch of fat about an hour before I go to bed and then get up in the morning and I'm going to have much higher blood ketone levels. And again, am I using those ketones? No, they're just floating around in my blood. Right. Finally, the third type of ketone is acetone and that's measured in your breath. There's actually two ways to measure acetone levels. Two ways. Yeah. You could use a breath meter Yeah. or you could find a friend and ask them if they think you're in ketosis by <laughs> sharing your keto breath that's with disgusting. them. That's disgusting. Keto breath. It's a thing. Yeah, we've all heard about keto breath. Well, that's what it is. It's the acetone coming out of your breath. And that's how, like, you can initially know that you're even in ketosis because you start developing that bad breath. Yeah, you're like, yep, ketosis. Yep. So that's what we're going to talk about today. That's what we want to focus. We want to focus on breath testing. Now, there's some differences between the breath testing and the blood testing. Like I said, the blood testing, you're testing the BHBs. That's what's floating around in your body, in your blood. When you're measuring for acetone, acetone is the ketone that is produced when your body is actually burning the fat. So your body converts the fat into ketones and that starts coming out in your breath. So you could measure how deep you are in ketosis as far as your fat by actually measuring the acetone coming out of your breath. So we don't want to use our friends and abuse them and have them test our breath for us. So what is a better way? So you can get a breath meter, but here's the thing. There are a lot of breath meters on the market. If you go on Amazon, you're going to see a whole bunch of them and um, they're going to be like $20. Like this one. I got to see this though. It's got a (laughs) keychain on it. Are you putting this on your keys? Like, I mean, how many times are you measuring per day? And like, what are you doing with this? This is so odd. So yeah, you're going to see ones that are like $20, $30, $40. But there are some problems with breath testing. And that's why you don't want to be getting a super cheap one. Because the breath testing can be a little finicky too. That's why people say like the most accurate way is to test your blood. But again, you're testing what's floating around in your blood. And somebody like me, I don't have a lot of excess ketones floating around my blood. So that doesn't help me as much. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is 
what this is measuring is air. So if I go put this in my kitchen, what's in your kitchen? Onion smells, cleaning fluid smells, all of that starts going into the system and can kind of clog up the system. So you need a quality product. You, yeah. Now this one here also, when you turn it on, and it makes an annoying noise, so I'm not going to bother with yeah, this one. it's really annoying. And this one I think is like $20. Um, when you press the button, it's just going to give you numbers like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or it could give you a 0.1. But it's just like, if you look in the instructions, it, just it says, says Y or N. Yeah, Y or N. That's all it's telling. It's not telling you how deep you are, how much acetone that you have in your breath or any of that kind of stuff. So you really want to get a good one if you're going to do breath testing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we have here is we have a, one from a company called Keto Scan Mini. Keto Scan. And we actually tried this when we were at KetoCon. Uh, KetoCon. Now, I don't know where's my phone because you're going to need your phone. Now, this one does have some numbers and stuff that appear on here, um, but it also has an app. So that's what we're going to go ahead and use. And we're going to start letting this thing sync up because when you first turn it on, what is different between this one, and it says the device is turned off. And like, for example, this one, one is that this one actually goes through a complete calibration process. Uh, process. So like it's, it tells me right here that like, okay, it's going to start doing it. So if you look on here, it's got a countdown and what it's doing right now is it's, it's initializing the sensor to kind of eliminate all of the stuff that may be floating around in the air. Yeah. What is the environmental things that it needs to kind of burn off? And it does come with a bunch of these little mouthpieces as well. Now, still, you don't want to store this like in your kitchen. I do like this one's got like a little cap on it so you can kind of keep out some of those environmental and things. And a little baggy. Yeah. So what's going to happen is, again, now we're going through, when you first turn it on, it goes through like this 45 second initialization. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, just, it's working on the sensor. But what happens is, is over time, these sensors do go bad, which is one of the downfalls of using breath meters. Okay, this one here, you don't even know how long it's going to last. So now on here, it's it's entering into what's called, a, it says, a, you're not going to be able to see this because the screen is white, but this is a self-diagnostic mode. So it's telling me in here, gently inhale and then blow steadily through the mouthpiece. So you want to go ahead and do that? Sure. And it actually is telling you like when to stop. Okay, so you're done. Now what's doing is it's all it's going through right now is a diagnosis mode. What's the difference between what is floating in the air versus what is floating in your breath? Right. So now what's going to happen is the whole system is going to restart and now you can go ahead and test. Now you only have to do this like when you first turn it on for the day, but then if you want to test yourself several times like close together, you'll be able to do that. And so now it's entering into the regular to testing phase. So I'm going to get out another one. Just because I don't trust your mouth. <laughs> I'm using my teeth. Oh, I have a pair of scissors here. You're not supposed to use your teeth. Okay, so I'm going to change out this thing, even though I usually probably wouldn't just use the same one. If it's you, if it's just you yeah. using it. So now it's saying analyze my breath. Okay, now what's going to happen is it actually has down here on the bottom of like tips how to do it. And it says for consistent results, blow steadily and continuously into the mouthpiece. If you inhale too deeply or blow too forcefully, you're going to dilute the acetone. Because, because think of that. You're like, I'm taking in everything around me and the environment and blowing out some of that first. Yeah. So you really want to actually try to blow out some of the, the air in your nostrils first and then get down to that deeper air. Yeah, because all of the acetone is in the bottom of your lungs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to test. And so what I'm going to do is just... Breathing normally, I'm going to breathe out through my nose, and then I'm going to exhale the rest into the system. Okay, so it beeped, and now it's going to measure it. It says completed on here. And just wait a couple seconds, and so it's saying I have a 4.9, if you can see it on there. And now on my app, it's actually going to come up. And then it says 4.9 par parts per million uh, is what my ketosis level is through the breath. And it actually says on here, you are just below a reliable state of ketosis. My approximate bat body, fern uh, body fat burning rate is 0.11 ounces per hour. So that's telling me this is about how much body fat you're burning. Per hour. Okay. And then also on this thing, it also will like store all of your different results. 
And so you can kind of go through here and say like, okay, this is what you were like blowing at this time and it keeps a complete log of everything. So I really like that about this. Yeah, because you can see like how does different foods affect you. Now that's the other nice part about this app that's on here is it's got this place where it says like comments and photos, you know, on here. And you can actually take a photo of the food you ate. So that like, if let's say I want to just test like how how does this food treat me and then there's a good log to it. Wow. So if you are trying to track like. You can really track really everything. Really specifically you can track. Okay. Really so you want to go ahead and test you and see sure. where you're at. Now we have not eaten for a little while Now either. let me use my. You're going to use thing. your mouthpiece. How do I take it off? Just pull it off. Now I haven't eaten yet. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to start. I mean, again, now it, the other thing here is you can't see it on the screen, but I'm going to tell you what it says. It says right here, there are some cautions, and then we're going to get into some of the downfalls to using breath tests in a minute. But it says cautions. The following situation should be avoided or keto scan uh, may require a self-diagnostic test to ensure accuracy. Do not brush your teeth or use mouthwash 30 minutes prior. Don't consume candy or gum 30 minutes prior. Don't smoke within 30 minutes. Don't eat food within 30 minutes. Um, if you're going to drink or the morning after, uh, if you're going to drink alcohol, mm -hmm. you have, make sure you wait till the morning after with or 24 hours because wow. it's going to, again, affect it. And also coffee, tea, or beverages other than water, you want to wait 30 minutes. So back to the drinking, because this is kind of like what a police officer is using. Sort of. We're not measuring alcohol, but you are measuring acetone. But yeah. it, again, all of that stuff can affect like how the results come out. So everybody, I'm going to hit confirm. And now again, it's going to count down 24 seconds because it's initializing. And it's happening the same on this cute little sleek design. Yeah, totally synced. Yep. Okay, so you got 10 seconds left. It's kind you of want to get you can start getting it ready. And again, you don't you're already inhaling. This is if this will really affect it. Do not inhale before you exhale. So even there, you actually did inhale before you put it in your mouth. So it it's it takes some practice to do yeah, that. Yeah, it does. Okay, so it's saying that you've got a 3.5. And it'll, again, it'll show up on here. Oh, if you can see the screen. 3.5, and it says you're burning approximately 0.8 ounces per hour, and you're in an early stage of ketosis. And if you are going to do breath testing, you definitely want to get a better meter like this because it does all the calibrating and stuff, and it really can give you accurate, accurate results. Now, you can't... The result numbers don't cross over. Yes. So if you were testing your blood and you got a 3.6, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I should get an award for ketosis. Whereas on this, that's just an entry level Yeah, number. they have they have absolutely nothing to do with each other. And here's the thing. I'm glad you mentioned the blood because you can actually have somebody like me where I will have a very low blood number, like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, but then... I'll blow like a 9.3 on here. And I'm the opposite. And you can be the opposite. Now, what the, what does that mean? That means that I don't have a lot of extra ketones floating around in my blood, but my body is in a fat burning state creating ketones because this is measuring what's coming out from the fat being burned. Wow. So you can have one high, one low. You can also have them both about the same. So it's nice to have both, yes. honestly, so that you can kind of measure where you're at and you get more of a you know, a three-dimensional picture of right. what's going on. So let's talk about some of the pros uh, for using breath testing. Okay. Okay, so one of the pros is, uh, probably the biggest pro, it's cheap. Yes. Okay. Now, this particular unit does sell for $149. Okay. And you can buy it on Amazon. I will leave a link down below. Uh, we're not sponsored by them. We're not affiliates with them or anything like that. We just thought you guys would find it interesting to, like, see this being tested and used. Yeah. Now, it, but here's the thing. The only thing you have to do is buy this. $149. You're done. You can buy... Look, were you chewing on this mouthpiece? No, that's the other end. Oh, Okay. Wrong ends. 
Um, the only thing, other thing that you could buy if you want to is you could buy a bunch of these mouthpieces. I'm kind of like, I don't feel I need to constantly replace them if it's only my mouth going on there. Right. Or even your mouth. I mean, I do kiss you after all. So, so I would probably just clean these every once in a while, but you can buy extra mouthpieces. It's not pieces. like pricking your finger and using blood. Yeah. So, whereas the blood meter, you are only going to pay $50 up front, but then every single time you test, you're paying, you know, 55 cents, 65 cents, a dollar per strip. Some of the strips are like $3, so it can get really expensive. Now, what that means is if you want to be like us and like, say, test your foods constantly, that could be really expensive. Yeah. So, this is, if you're one of those people that wants to test like multiple times a day, every single day, this is definitely going to be more cost effective. Yes. And again, because it does do that sensor thing, you know it's reliable. Now, according to their website, it does say that after about 320 tests, you need to replace the little sensor in there to make sure it stays accurate, but it's like 30 bucks to change that sensor out. So that's still a fraction of the cost of blood testing. Yeah. So that is one of the best, one of the big reasons that you might want to test your breath over your blood. Mm -hmm. Another reason you might want to test your breath over your blood is if you're in a situation like me where you know that you're in ketosis, you know you're burning like, you know, ketone, you're burning fat and turning it into ketones, but you don't have a whole lot in your blood because you're very fat adapted and your body is very good at utilizing those ketones. Yeah. So this is a good, accurate way to see like, where am I like within my ketones? Am I burning a lot of fat? Am I only burning a little bit of fat? And it's going to change throughout the day. It's going to change based on food you eat and everything else. It's further proof that this is very individualistic. You're listening to your body. And once you've said, okay, like you're saying, my body doesn't store it in the blood the same way. I'm getting a totally different result using the breath test. So right. that, so once you've listened to your body, okay, maybe this would be right for you yeah. versus other people, the blood would be better to yep. measure. And what's interesting about using the breath test, again, because you don't have to pay per test, you could really check you know, throughout the day because here's, let's talk about some different things with the breath. Like if you test in the morning, same thing with your blood, you're generally going to have a lower level of ketosis because of the dawn phenomenon. Yes. If you test um, at, right after exercising, when you start exercising, especially if you're doing like some HIIT programs or if you're doing like weightlifting and stuff like that, your body's going to start creating some glucose to get through that. You're going to have lower levels of ketones. Um, so the best time to test after that is about two hours afterwards. Sometimes if you test with a food, you're going to go up real quick. Like if you eat something super high fatty, you're going to, your numbers will go up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But if you eat something that's like a higher in carbs or something that maybe isn't a keto food, your numbers will drop pretty quickly. So what's really nice about this is that you can afford to test multiple times a day. Yes. It's not going to cost you anymore. And you can see how does different times of the day and different meals affect me. Yeah, because I mean, that's one of the things with the blood meter for me. It's like, I don't want to test more than once, maybe twice a day because they're just too expensive, especially between two of us. Yeah, absolutely. So if you have two of us testing, we're going through $30, $40, $50 in a week sometimes if we're doing some kind of an experiment or something like that. With yeah. this, you don't have to worry about Multiple it. Multiple times a day, it's fine. You know, especially like sometimes like just even your stress levels itself will affect your levels of ketosis because you start releasing cortisol and stuff. And I'm not talking about just like stress, like mentally stressed, like your job is stressing you out. But if you've got a cold, that could kick you out of ketosis. So. Mm -hmm. All of those different stresses in your body, and this is a nice way to just be able to measure it. Yeah. So we've talked about the positives of yep. breath testing, and there are a lot of positives hanging out in your wallet yes. when it comes to breath testing, but what are some of the negatives? Okay, well, there are a few negatives to breath testing, but the biggest one, it comes down to user error. And you could see that with me, right? Yep. I, I'm not practiced in breathing correctly. Yes. You know, what you want to do when you take a breath test is like be at the doctor's office, <gasps> like yeah. take a big breath. And you almost need to think about testing as if you are underneath the surface of the water and you are resurfacing and you're blowing out all of the air to surface, right. right? Yeah, because again, like I said before, the acetone is in the bottom of your lungs, so you wanna to get to that. So if you're only breathing out what's in the top of your lungs, like when you first start exhaling, that's what it's gonna measure and it's gonna show a different reading yeah. than if you can get all the way to the bottom, the bottom part of your lungs. Not so super accurate. It just takes a lot of practice. Then you also have to deal with making sure that you're not testing like before you eat. 
or right like right right after you eat or testing like right after you brush your teeth or testing after you drink some alcohol or something like that cuz that can all again affect it but it really comes down to user error is the biggest problem with breath testing. It's almost like you need to give yourself some time yeah. to just get used to it. Yep. And just, you know, don't rage quit this. Yes. <laughs> like just, you know, try it for a couple of months before you, you know, until you get the hang of it. Yeah. And again, one of the other, I forgot to even mention, positives of it is that it can measure those very low levels of ketosis. Whereas you really can't get that with the blood. You start getting that like low reading on a blood test. With this one, it's going to really tell you like you're at a low level, you're at a medium level, you're at a super high level, you know. So it's a night, again, the better ones, not these cheap ones like this. I'm talking about like something like this where it's re literally giving you the parts per million of the acetone. Your unit should not have a keychain. <laughs> It should not be a keychain. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, so the biggest, again, drawback is when it comes down to like, you know, user error. Also, again, having it, making sure that you have a good device, storing the cap on it, don't store it in the kitchen because again, it can take in all this stuff in the environment. That's why, again, you want to have a sensor that can constantly calibrate itself. Yeah. So. So that is pretty much everything we have to do say about breath testing. I'm actually really enjoying breath testing. We've been messing with this unit for a couple of weeks now. It's a very high quality product. Yes, I very like well the made. I, I believe it's made in Korea. South Korea. South Korea. And so this is actually what the box comes with, looks like. It comes in a nice box. It looks comes like with an this Apple nice box. carry case. And again, there are a couple of other good ones on the market. There's um, the Katonix is another really good one. It's the only other one I would recommend. And also, if you are interested to learn more about breath testing, I will also say uh, Danny Vega and his wife did an incredible podcast with the creator of Katonix and uh, where they really talk about breath testing and what the advantages are and like why breath testing can be better than you know, a blood testing. So I will leave a link to that one down below. Mm -hmm. So, so that is our video for today. Uh, hopefully you guys have learned something. If you guys have tried breath testing or if you've been considering it, let us know down in the comments section. And if you have been, let us know which unit you've been currently using. And also do you have any medical devices that have a keychain to them? <laughs> if you like what you saw, do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.